We say keep the struggle going. Those of you with something on your mind, those of you with consciousness on your mind, yeah, you may seem like the weird one in your crew right now. Some of you in your little clique that you're in or your crew that you're in, you might be considered weird because you got serious things on your mind. You don't want to just talk about sex. You don't want to just talk about the mall. You don't want to just talk about what you can buy and so on and so forth. You've got more serious things on your mind. There's nothing wrong with you. Although we're living in a time right now that if you ask people to come and listen to truth, you'll get a few people. But if you ask people to come to a party, it'll be packed. Yeah, we're living in that time right now. But it is your job for those of you who are awake to help to wake up the others and be patient. Don't think it's going to happen like that. It don't work that way. I know we're living in a time where people are oblivious to things where people are thinking about trivial matters. Right has become wrong, wrong has become right. The oppressor is made to look like the oppressed, and the oppressed is made to look like the oppressor, but keep standing on this truth, because those of you with something on your mind, with consciousness on your mind, you are considered the weird ones today, but tomorrow you will be the norm. Thank you very much, Assalamu alaikum. We have time for questions and answers, but quickly before we do that, uh, we, we would like everyone to come tonight to our program at Crystal Cove Auditorium. The doors will open at 7.30. It's called Silence is Consent. Stop the Palestinian Holocaust with Amir Abdel Malik. And now we can start the question and answer session. It's like um, it's like you can't. It's like you can't really put one over the other. They both, de like you know, they have a they have a satanic system, man. It's like they're imperialists. They're colonialists. One's imperialist. One's a colonialist. That's almost like saying, who do you like better, Democrats or Republicans? You know what I'm saying? I mean, they both believe in empire. The Israelis believe in empire. America believes in empire. They believe in empire. They believe in colonization. And so we see them, you know, just like they see the flag. You know, the flag is together. Yeah, we see them together. Yeah, they're, they're one and the same. They're, they're together. They're both colonialists, they're both imperialists, and they're both eventually going to fall. Yeah, so, you know. Okay, uh, do you love America? Huh? Do you love America? As an empire? As a country? You can't love an imperialist, man. You can't, no, you can't love an imperialist. It's like, it's like you're, asking, you're, asking, you're asking this person who was raped, do you like your rapist? Do you like your rapist? How do you don't like your rapists? I mean, come on now. It's like, it's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the recipient of the so-called American dream. My people are the victim of it. And so you can't ask the victim if you like the perpetrator. You know what I'm saying? Now in terms of, it's a very pretty place. America's a very pretty place. You know what I'm saying? We just hope that there's some good white people who was running it. Just like Malcolm said, there's some good white people in America. They just ain't got no power. So we want the good white people to have a coup d'etat. Coup d'etat in America and take over power in America. There's other people that want to ask questions, so if you could sit down, we'll take the next question. Go ahead. Okay, uh, it's especially easy for Americans and others to get fully behind Israel's policies when they can categorize Israel's opponents under the general country's heading of terrorism, particularly in a post-9-11 world. So if the militant Palestinian groups could lay down their arms and unite behind a philosophy of non-violence in the spirit of Gandhi, King, and Mandela, Perhaps more people could see the situation as oppressor and oppressed, as colonialist and colonized, rather than as state and terrorist. Uh, such a movement may not by itself stop the deprivation of life and free of property of Palestinians, but it could make way for heavy international and internal pressure against harmful Israeli policy. So given that Israel itself is unlikely to embrace such a philosophy, and given that in similar situations in history, dominant power has never relinquished to violence. Do you think that now is the appropriate time for Palestinians to unite in embracing a non-violent approach? No. Um, 
he, he was he was he was asking about um do do um do I think it's about time now for the Palestinians to unite and to embrace a nonviolent approach? Only if the Israelis embrace a nonviolent approach. But as long as Israelis are using F-16 fighter jets on refugee camps, M1 tanks on people who don't have an army, you know what I'm saying? Helicopter gunships, then maybe they can talk about um, uh, nonviolence. Now I think part of what you're talking about is. The American, I mean, the Palestinian people chose nonviolence as a principle, not as a tactic, but as a principle. Okay. Now, some now some instances maybe nonviolence would be a proper tactic in certain things, but not as a principle. Principle is a rule of conduct in everything. So I think you're talking about adopting nonviolence as a rule of conduct in every in, in, you know situation. So I think what what you're talking about is like in the civil rights movement, because you mentioned Dr. King too. Um, let the people see us getting beat up. And once the people out there see us getting beat up, they'll become more sympathetic to our cause, and then they might help us, and so on and so forth, that kind of thing. Um, not in Palestine. Not in Palestine. Um, it, like we said, when, it's, when the Israelis use nonviolence and the Palestinians use, use nonviolence, but you can't take a right away from a people to fight against occupation. You, they have a human right to fight, to physically fight against occupation. So no, I don't think it's time for that. But check this out. Didn't you see what happened in Lebanon? Hezbollah beat Israelis' butts. Right? Didn't you see, didn't you, didn't you see that, didn't you see that the Israelis had to get out of um, Gaza? They, 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 they withdrew out of Gaza. They, they withdrew. That wasn't because of nonviolence that they withdrew. They didn't, they didn't withdraw out of Lebanon because of nonviolence. They didn't withdraw out of Gaza, although, you know, we know what, we know what, we know what they're doing in Gaza now, but they didn't withdraw out of Gaza because of nonviolence. One of the things you have to notice is that the Israelis have suffered major losses when they went up against Muslims. Have you noticed that? When they, not really, when they went up against nationalists, they would get beat. The nationalists would get beat. When they went up against, but when, they, when the Israelis go up against Muslims, they lose. I mean, they lose. So now they're trying, now they're trying to make up for Lebanon. They're trying to make up for Lebanon. You feel me? They're trying to make up for Lebanon. And so every time we fought for Islam, we won. So you have to look at that. We are we are their Achilles heel. We're their Achilles heel. Next question for the lady right up there in the white shirt. You'll be up to her, sir. No, they're not. Uh huh. Remember peace of Galilee. Remember when the Israelis went into Lebanon, peace for Galilee, and stayed there for 20 years? Remember that? And they had to be kicked out? Remember that? Hezbollah kicked them out. And so now you have, now you have a situation where, ever since they got kicked out of Lebanon, the Israeli, the Israeli government still do, do, do what they can to try to destabilize Hezbollah, because they remember they got kicked out of Lebanon. That was the first time the Israelis ever had to have a withdrawal. They've never had to withdraw, unconditional withdrawal, out of Lebanon, because they went up against the Muslims. You feel me? Not nationalists. 67 was nationalism. That was, se that was secular nationalism. When they go up against Muslims, they always, I'm choosing my words carefully, they always lose. And so now, when Hezbollah did what they did to them, right, Hezbollah had to. You have to fight against occupation. You have to fight against that terrorism. And the terrorists are the United States. The terrorists are the Israelis. Those are the terrorists. So now Hezbollah are freedom fighters. They're freedom fighters. Last question, and if you have any questions after that, you can speak to him personally after we finish. Thank you for your talk. You hear a lot about violence, violence. Could you comment on the assassination of the United Nations Secretary, Count Fort Bernard Dodd, <laughs> by the Jewish fanatics? Can you comment about the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin? You just did. <laughs> No, because it's like, you know, it's, <sighs> I know this is hard. I know this is hard, really, um, for some of you um, to deal with this. But in order for there to be peace, there's got to be justice. You can't mention any peace without justice. You can't do it. And the type of crimes that the Israelis have done, like the brother mentioned, the other types of crimes that all the speakers mentioned all this week, 
the type of crimes that they've done, the type of crimes that they're doing, there can never be, 